And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Senators, which is kind of a blandly uh, named game and looking games, but I was certainly interested in this one from La Mame Games uh, because their game last year, which was Gooseberry, which was turned into Chameleon, I really liked, and of course, many, many, many people have played one of their games, Coup. So, even though the game didn't look that spectacular, I had a feeling this would be an interesting one. Let's check it out. So this is the four boards put together. The bottom is the senator track. You're trying to have the most senators of the game. Each turn someone's going to be the active player. That player is going to be drawing an event card. Some of the event cards on them are going to say war. So when the fourth war card shows up, the game is going to end. There's also talents. This is the currency of the game, the money that players will have. You'll start with some money and each player also starts with a shield that tells you how turn order goes and to keep your money hidden from the other players. Now, on your turn, when you're the active player, first you draw the event card and deal with it. So for example here, if you draw this, everyone gets two talents for every faction that has fewer senators than you. If you draw this state deficit here, everyone makes a blind bid with their talents, hiding it in their fist. And if the total reaches 20, whoever bid the highest gets a senator. Otherwise, whoever bid the lowest loses a senator. In war, everyone makes a blind contribution, and whoever pays the highest gets a senator. So that's the first thing that happens. Then the active player has a choice. One thing they can do is they can do an auction. So when it happens, they turn over the top card of every deck. So there's resources here and there's offices. And then players are going to take turns bidding. Each player can make one bid, although you're allowed to bid on each thing. So maybe the green player decides to make the lowest bid on everything. And then the yellow player outbids him here and here. The red player outbids him here, and the blue player outbids him here and him here. So green's not getting anything. But the active player, let's say the white player is the active player, the white player then goes here, the highest bid is three. They can play the yellow player three talents and take the cloth, or the yellow, they'll accept three talents from the yellow player, and the yellow player gets the cloth. And they do that for each one. These are resources. This here is a special card, like this just lets you take a senator. From a faction with more senators, discard when used. So they're like special cards that you have for the offices. A player can also, they can also, instead of turning over the cards, they can do extortion to somebody else. They first, when you do extortion, you're going to take three talents from the bank, and then they're going to pick, they're going to make an offer to each other player for one of your cards. You're going to basically say, oh, you have a card in front of you, I'm going to take this card, even if it's a, it doesn't even have to be a resource. And they offer you a price and there's no negotiation. Either that player takes your money and gives you the card, or they give you that money and keep the card. Finally, the other thing that you can do as your action is you can cash in. If you have exactly three cards and they are the same number, or they are the same type of resource, you can turn those in to get money. If it's all the same number, you get 15. If it's, if it's all the same color, you just take the total. So here I would get 13 talents for playing these. If it's the same number and the same color, you're going to get an extra 15 talents. So that can be a whole lot of money if you do that. Then, no matter what you pick on your turn, oh, I'm sorry, you do this when you cash in. Whenever you cash in money, you can buy more senators too. They cost 10 talents per senator. So that's one of the main ways to get senators. You can also, if you run out of money, you can, you can uh, lose a senator to get some money, which can be a bad thing. If you lose all your senators, you lose the game. But I've never seen that happen. You can also play with support cards. A support card is basically a card everybody has, which gives you a special ability. You start the game with these. So choose from the top cards when you actually add three talents for your contribution for every war. And you can steal these from other people or extort them from them uh, as the game goes by too. That's it. When the fourth war card shows up, game is over. Whoever has the most senators is the winner. This company isn't really well known for their components. These are just some cubes, some, some discs. The money here is okay. 
the boards, it's basically one big board, but they separate them because so they fit in a box. And even the cards, the cards are okay quality, and they're easy to see the different resources that are on the cards. Um, and I guess the artwork is okay, like on the different cards. It's that almost has a kind of a James Thurber type artist um, drawing aspect to it. And the shields are horrifically bad. They are a card that is bent, blocking it from no one's view. You have to be really short for these shields to do anything of any value, not to mention they fall over all the time. This company is really not known for their components at all. We're going to just have to judge it based on gameplay. Okay, folks, so Senators here. Now, again, there's nothing much to look at, but how does the game play? Play. You know, one of the things I really like is the bidding system in this game. I like the idea of putting the cubes on here. It tells you the amount you're going to bid, and you can outbid the other person. I'm not as keen on the single bid aspect, where you make your bid, someone outbids you, oh, well, you're out of luck. If somebody bids, uh, you know, you're, you're never quite sure how much to bid for any particular thing. You're constantly doing this mental arithmetic, okay, that card is going to be part of a set, so maybe it's worth it to get it here, or maybe I should just accept the money. The active player, it's hard to do that. Extortion thing, by the way, is a very mean and nasty thing to do to everyone. You're making everyone an offer for their cards, so they take the money or pay you the money. It's a way to get a lot of money if you need it, essentially, because most people who've taken a card have probably paid more than you're willing to offer it to them. But I mean, it is an effective thing. So I don't mind that idea, the extortion idea. It's nasty, but it's there. The auction, though, I have more of a problem with than just the game in general, these, these twisting of these cards, because you can get a really good set of cards. So let's say you manage to get, let's not the seven, eight, nine that I showed you, but let's say a five, six, seven of one color. That's a lot of money. It's 18 plus 15, it's 33. And when you have a lot of money in this game, you can suddenly start throwing that around. Now the game has kind of an in-game economy because you're doing that, but that in-game economy gets depleted also because of the events. You're blind bidding, thus giving up money. I feel like this game is going to disappoint a lot of people because they don't like the blind bidding. So some people aren't gonna be a fan of that. Some people aren't gonna be a fan of the once auction. You get one chance to, to, to bid. And even if you do, the other person can just decide to buy the cards anyway. Um, and some people might be put off by the fact that the game doesn't really feel like Senators. I mean, even the events. My problem with the game is just the complete chaotic nature of it. Let's say I get two green cards. I'm like, okay, I can't wait to see the next green card. And another green card doesn't come up for a while. That's problematic. The war cards could come up and the game could be over in 10 minutes. The war cards could come up really quickly. You're not sure when they're going to come up. The, uh, the money system is really hard to keep track of. There's just a lot going on. And then when you add in the special abilities, they're cool. And even these, uh, these offices here, senators may be bought for seven talents each. That's a great card to get. The governors of a certain area, you're immune to civil conflict. And this can be played as any grain, a one through nine. It's a while of that color. Those are extremely potent. And it's the game works on paper. And even now as I'm explaining it, I'm like, oh, it seems like it should work better than when I played it, but it just didn't. There's people who are gonna get totally shut out of the game, it happens every time I play it, where someone is just like, I'm not getting anything, I'm not getting any money, I don't have any resources. And that's not fun for those players. And I felt like the game just was a little too random in when events came up. And also, if one player plays slightly off, they pay too much money for something or too little, they can throw the game to another player. So it's also a very fragile game. So I like the other games in the past, but this one has been a miss for me. Eh. For once, the game didn't look that great and also didn't play that great either, unfortunately. That's Senators. Dice Tower Judgment, a little too chaotic. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Yeah. Yeah.